and I'm really happy to see so many familiar faces again. Um, first of all, I would like to, is it okay? First of all, I would like to uh, start with a quick survey again. Who are the ones who are breeders? Just raise your hands. Okay, good number. Who are the ones who are connected to animal welfare organizations, activities? Some people, okay. And who are the ones who, who are absolutely or sli slightly against pedigree dogs, purebred dogs? No, just, I'm just, okay, okay, but it will be a bit boring because, because I would tell my words and, and no, no classic debates on, on the topic, so I would have been a bit happy if, if there would be someone here who, who absolutely says that uh, purebred dogs or pedigree dogs are not the kind of stuff we should have in the world. Uh, first of all, a, a quick story. It happened yesterday in the evening. I posted this picture to my uh, personal Facebook page with, with uh, texting in Hungarian and in English as well. And Hungarians uh, left some comments that they don't understand the title. Is it a kind of sarcasm? Because why, why would people hate uh, pedigree dogs? I don't know the situation in Lithuania, but in Hungary we don't have a division of PETA. So it means that there is no massive anti-breeding propaganda. But in many countries, it is a very, very serious issue that uh, purebred dogs have a very negative uh, perception by the society, a very negative image. And that's what I would like to talk about, uh, the reason behind it, the solution, and just to give some guidelines how we can change it, especially breeders. First of all, uh, Let's see, I collected some ideas what people usually say negative images about, about pedigree dogs or purebred dogs. First of all, all purebred dogs are unhealthy because it's due to inbreeding, due to exaggerated breeding. The other saying is crossbred dogs are healthy. We heard about this and I will talk a bit more about that as well. Designer breeds are even more healthy we know this well, that if you want to have a super dog, you have, to find, you have to find and buy a crossbred dog for a fortune, and it will be extra good. And breeders are evil and greedy people for many different reasons, because they do this to earn money. Uh, you, you can hear really, really, really uh, excessive accusations towards breeders why, why they are bad, bad people. And you could say, why do we need to care about it at all? And uh, we heard that the breeder society is a closed population within the society, which is not good. And still you can hear ideas that, that okay, we are the breeders, we are doing our own business. Uh, but still, the world we are living in has been changing for, for, for decades and is still changing. You cannot really... Uh, maintain the old attitude. You cannot say that, okay, we are the breeders and, and you can stay away from our business because we are doing what we want. Because uh, there will be a decrease uh, for the activity of breeders in many areas. Uh, there, are leg there are and there will be legislative consequences. There are some countries where certain breeds are banned are, or are about to be banned and we could have a long list about dangerous breeds, etc., 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 and there are anti-breeding propagandas worldwide, in, in depending which country you are from. So it is it is a, a general and a present threat for, for the breeders and kennel clubs and and uh, organizations. And why do we need to understand? We could say that okay, you are ignorant, you are talking your bullshit. Uh, I don't care. But uh, if you want to handle the situation, it is always the, the, the very first step of your tactic to understand your enemy, especially if someone is really attacking you. You have to understand the motives and what went wrong with all these things. And the more precisely you understand why things are happening, you can set up a really effective uh, counteract, counteraction or, or campaign or whatever. And I don't want to spoil the solution, uh, but I will. Uh, education and communication are the key factors. 
which are needed to have change in the, in the perception and the reputation of purebred dogs and pedigree dogs and the activity of breeders. First of all, why do people think so? Uh, why do they have such a negative image? Education and knowledge about dogs is, is something which is really, really missing from the world recently. Oversimplification I will explain in, in details soon. Misunderstood concept of breeding. Even when you ask breeders uh, what a breed is, the term breed mean, means, what a purebred dog is, whether a dog is a purebred dog without registration, you can cause really, really massive and fiery arguments. Just check it. I, 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 I uh, checked it half a year ago in a Hungarian Facebook group used by Hungarian breeders and they almost killed each other on oh, Facebook. It is, it is a very good test just to see what breeders themselves think about breeding, what it means and how it should work. And breeders are easy targets. They are registered, they have a kennel name, their dogs have pedigrees, etc. etc. It is very easy to identify them and, and set up a legislation or something like that. Some words about education. Uh, just just some, some major ideas. What should be sorted out and what should be taught to breeders, to the society together. What, breed, what a breed is and what breed preservation is about. I'm re really happy that the word preservation uh, became really current nowadays because breed preservation is something which is a key for why breeding is so, so necessary. Uh, and a good question that what breeders in general, worldwide, know about dogs. What they know about the biology, how to breed, hereditary, etc, etc. And the other good question, what animal welfare activists and organi organizations know about the same topic? Because they are making uh, assumptions, judgments, without really knowing what they are talking about. And another big problem is mis misinterpreted uh, scientific results. I see so many examples which absolutely show that someone read a scientific article, a scientific paper somewhere, and ju they just grab some information out of the context and they try to push their, their idea on something completely falsely. And, and it, it is a very, very big problem. For example, uh, probably you've heard about the the genetic depression thing, which is uh, related to the loss of diversity and one uh, idea to handle this is outcrossing dogs. It is, it is a concept and it is true that it can help, but, but it is not the answer, scientifically, it's not the answer and solution for everything. But people forget about it because they somewhere on Facebook read two lines about, about outcrossing dogs and suddenly they think they know everything now about genetics. And this is what they start to, to push on Facebook and, and everywhere. <laughs> and another problem which was covered in the previous uh, presentation is the segregation of breeder society. Uh, it, is, it is a problem. Breeders should, should open up for, for the general public and, and, and educate them and communicate with them. And this is... Uh, this question is, is really important and more important than we, we talk about it. What do, what do dog keepers know about their fur babies? And we go back to, to the topic of anthropomorphism, overhumanization of dogs. If we treat dogs as dogs or, or like a uh, human child and want to, to measure their needs that way. And about oversimplified world, which has a very negative effect on, on the reputation of breeders and pedigree dogs, I collected some points. Some years ago, one of my presentation here in Vilnius was about this exact topic. I don't want to repeat the 25 minutes again. But uh, from the aspect of communication, it is very important to understand how people communicate, how they oversimplify the world around them, and uh, we are living in a, in a, in a world where, where facts does not really matter 
that much because emotions are more important. Expressing emotions is, is important uh, compared to facts and, and, and studies. And uh, uh, it is a really, really huge challenge nowadays how to educate people against fake news or, or falsely uh, build up uh, ideas or thinking. Uh, but it, it should be handled. And uh, if we are talking about the bad reputation of, of breeders and pedigree dogs, you, you can't just say that the breeder society has nothing to do with this and, and we are or you are only the victims. There are some dirty laundries to be, to be sorted out, first of all, and together with, with other problems. The education level of breeders I mentioned. The motive, motives of, of uh, breeders. And there is a reason why I uh, put a, a strike through and I put showers there. It is a question which occurred time to time today and it will occur again, I'm sure. Who is a breeder? What breeding is? Is it breeding if my uh, basic motive is to go to shows uh, week after week to collect titles? I know this is not something which is true for the whole breeder society, but there are many people whose main motivation is that. And it has a lot of consequences for further activities and it's causing a lot of problems. Uh, with covering reality to maintain reputation is, is, is a very complex topic as well. Probably you've heard about those stories when people had uh, a puppy with a litter with, with a genetic mutation or something like that. And instead of, uh, instead of uh, saying that, okay, it happens because it happens because we are talking about biology, instead of, of, uh, of that, uh, they forged the pedigree, they forged the, the DNA test or whatever. I do know that, that within, within breeders, it is a very complex and very difficult thing to, to, to say that, okay, this or that happens. Uh, but the worst thing is to cover up uh, uh, reality with, with, with a lie or something like that. It has consequences. Uh, the knowledge of breed clubs is a very interesting thing. I realized in many countries when, when people who are elected to the board of the breed club had really no idea what to do with that breed, how to regulate, and it is a problem many times. And it can go to the legislative bottleneck effect what, what I mean with that, uh, we all know, I hope all know, the bottleneck effect, it's the genetic term, when, when uh, the gene pool narrows down and more and more genetically inherited diseases will, will show up later. And in case, you can see in many countries, just because the breed clubs want to, to have strict regulations to decrease the number of dogs genetically affected, they have very strict regulations which, which goes to uh, a uh, not a solution, but, a, but an end result, where there will be a smaller population and smaller population, which means uh, more and more genetically inherited diseases. There are many countries now in, in uh, Western Europe which have very strict regulations for the sake of animal welfare, and they are causing a huge disaster for the gene pool of the breed with that. And uh, the, from, from the whole debate of, of the reputation of pedigree dogs is connected to health. So I would like to, to add my own uh, guidelines and ideas. The good gene concept again. This is something you hear all the time that uh, crossbred dogs only inherit good genes. Inbreeding is something very bad and evil. I won't go into to uh, the definition of inbreeding, what it goes and what is the problem with that. In our oversimplified world, nothing is black and nothing is just simply white. I know it is, it is very scary for many people that we are living in a complex world. We need guidance and it is very easy if you can uh, just think uh, within, within really, really simple labels, but it is not that, e not, not, not that uh, uh, easy topic at all, if it's bad or good. And, and the other common saying, because, because purebred dogs uh, are packed up with, with genetically inherited diseases, they are sick, they must be sick. 
And if we, if we take a look at the health state of, of a dog, what health is, and it was mentioned before that we want our dogs 100% healthy and living a life forever. Just, and and it, is a, it is an interesting uh, question uh, for me that if we are considered dogs not to be objects, why do we want our dogs to be like objects? Because if I buy a new smartphone and, and within two years it goes wrong, I, I start to complain that, excuse me, it was guaranteed. In case of dogs, we are talking about biological entity, and it means it will have any kind of health issues. I don't really understand, and, and no one who, who I asked could, un, could explain, okay, I know the explanation from the psychological part, but why we want people, why we want uh, that dogs are all the time unhealthy or whatever. Actually, death is the only one certain thing in life. And, and we're always so surprised that, oh, some, some bad health state happens. <laughs> and so uh, the health, is health uh, issue is a very complex one, just some ideas. Uh, it is so good that genetics as a science developed a lot. But we put everything on genetics. This is the key word. If something, if a dog is, is sick, it must be uh, because of the genes, especially if it's a pedigree dog. Uh, and the problem with this, that the environmental elements affecting on a dog is completely forgotten. I don't know if the situation changed in Lithuania, but I've heard before that even professors uh, making lectures about hip and elbow dysplasia uh, expressed that this disease is genetically inherited only. It is not true. It is not true. We've heard about the slippery floors. We heard about many things. Nutrition. What happens to a dog uh, which, is not, which, it, which does not get proper food during that phase of their life when it is developing? And if this dog will have dysplasia within two or three years, is it the fault of the breeder? Uh, when someone realizes, for example, that the dog has some problems, and instead of going to the vet, he or she goes to Facebook and writes a post in, uh, with, with, with asking for some help that, oh, my dog is, uh, can barely move. Do you, do, you can, do you know any advice what to do with my dog? Any ideas? It is happening. I don't know what is uh, going on here, for example. But in Hungary, it is a common problem that people go to, to the internet to cure their own dogs instead of a vet. And in, case, in such a case, when the, the health state of the dog uh, starts to develop to the very negative phase, uh, it, maybe it, it can be stopped at the early stage and there will be no such serious problem. Whose fault is that? Is, is this the fault of the breed which is packed up with genetically inherited diseases? No, not really. Uh, uh, and just, just to mention this, this labeling, we are using purebred dogs and crossbred dogs like really, really oversimplified labels, just like discrimination. If a purebred dog is like this, then it should be this and that and that. And if this is a crossbred dog, it should be like this and this and that. And we don't really know many times what to do with this oversimplified thing if a crossbred dog gets ill or a purebred dog is healthy. People get sometimes shocked. Uh, and, and health is a very, very complex thing. It is not just like yes or no. Some doctors usually say, especially vets, that, that everyone is, is ill. Maybe they are just not diagnosed yet. So everyone has some health issues, will have a health issue. Some illnesses are serious, some ones are just, just there for years and you don't even know about it and some, some things happen. It is not just a question that is it healthy or not. And the question is that, uh, again, that do pet keepers know how to keep their dog properly to avoid all the environmental elements uh, to keep the dog uh, uh, healthy? And this is the nature-nurture nature debate. Uh, 
the DNA defines the probability and vulnerability for that illness or for that trait. And it is, it is true in case of positive things. If I, I inherited genes to be a tall, strong, a man with a, with a tall body and tall, tall and strong body, and if I don't get enough food in my childhood, will I be? No, probably not, because I didn't got stuff. And this is, this is true in case of illnesses as well. There are so many genetically inherited diseases that you have the, the probability and the vulnerability, but you have to have some triggering factors to have that uh, symptom fully in the dog. And they collected some effects of environment which have effect on, on the health of any dogs, not, check, not just pedigree or purebred or crossbred dogs. And another thing we don't really talk about, uh, now we have scientific studies about the psychosomatic disorders. In case of humans, it is not a debate at all that if you have a life full of stress, uh, anxiety or whatever, it has a very negative uh, effect on your body. And uh, separation problems with dogs is a current issue, uh, especially in big cities, and it has negative effect on the health of dogs as well. Not immediately. Your, your dog won't have cancer within one week uh, because it is at home all the time and have no idea what to do with itself. But within three or five years, it can develop any kind of diseases just because of the separation anxiety or any mental states which has a negative effect on the dog. And what is a breed and why is it important? Breed preservation, again, when breed, uh, the, the question of breed uh, occurs, many times you can hear that, uh, oh, why are you are talking about uh, breeds? Because mutts can be loved as well. Okay, this is not the question. So talk about something else. Uh, uh, breed preservation and the importance of breeds should be explained many, many times to tell people what does it mean? Why should I keep a purebred dog? Why is it important? And this is, this is uh, uh, a, a short result from a Hungarian survey. They asked people about many, many things, and one thing was that uh, what their preferences are when they choose a dog from a shelter. The question was that. The first is age, health, uh, behavior, outlook, traits related to a breed. Uh, I could analyze it a lot, but it is, it is definitely not true that outlook is at the fourth place. I don't want to explain the reason why, but we are always choosing by the cover. I, 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 we should accept it. I know that, that our society always says that beauty comes from inside, and don't judge a book by the cover, but you probably know the meme about the content of, of women's magazine. 50% about, about accept yourself as you are because beauty is coming from the outside and the rest of the content is about how to lose weight within two days and how to, how to avoid your wrinkles. So, uh, <laughs> what I want to say, uh, what I want to say is that the outlook is, is more important than we accept it. And the sad thing, and why I put this here, is the fifth place, which is the traits related to the breed. Because there are uh, many aspects, uh, many consequences, animal welfare consequences related to the breed. As Tamash mentioned, related to breed preservation, that your lifestyle, your attitude, your, your whole environment defines what sort of dog you could keep properly. And otherwise, there will be a very, very uh, malfunctioned interaction with your dog in health, in behavior, or whatever. And then comes all the animal welfare problems. If you can't uh, uh, give uh, proper activity or exercise to your dog, it will have health problems, mental problems. It, if it has uh, uh, behavioral issues, you have to solve it. Uh, you have to beat up your dog or go to a trainer, or put it in a shelter, or whatever. So the majority of animal welfare problems mostly goes back to that moment when someone decides that this dog is going to be the one who is going to live with me for the following 10, 15 years. And the biggest enemy of breeders, because breeders many times say that, that oh, 
the biggest enemies are the animal welfare organizations because they are always attacking us and, and uh, saying that adopt a, adopt a dog from the shelter. But this, I, I, do, I do not agree with that. Uh, which one is a pure red dog from the picture? Okay, what, what is happening when someone uh, looks at a dog and it, it looks like a breed? It, it has the, the outlook of a breed. Oh, it must be a purebred dog because it looks like so. And if, uh, if it looks like as a purebred dog, it must be the result of breeding and it must be bred by a kennel. So, and at this point, uh, people say that if it looks like a breed, this dog must come from a kennel. And I add some extra more thing. Uh, is it a dog with a pedigree? And if yes, it must be connected to the FCI. This is a problem. Uh, for example, in Hungary, I faced many times situations when animal welfare organizations approached me to explain how it is possible that uh, they rescued a dog or whatever happened with a pedigree and they couldn't find the FCI logo on the paper. Because, and I told her, and it is, and I told her that, look, it, uh, is not only the Hungarian Kennel Club under the FCI who is registering dogs. And it is obvious for all of you, but not for the vets, not for animal welfare organizations. And what comes from this? Uh, the result is that people say that I bought a pedigree dog with this and that and that problem. And all the blame goes back to, to the FCI kennels without having anything to do with that. People in general, and including vets and animal welfare organizations, have no clue that not only FCI member kennel clubs can issue pedigrees. And it is a problem. These, these dogs are the lookalikes ones. And the problem is that when a breeder, uh, when a vet, for example, uh, realizes that 80% that of the Labradors at, the, at, at his or her service are affected by dysplasia, what they are saying, Labradors are genetically destroyed because they all have dysplasia. First of all, are these dogs purebred dogs? Are these dogs coming from kennels? How can you prove that? But that's what they are saying, and that's why what uh, <coughs> shelters are saying as well. Uh, here you can find uh, a study. Uh, I hope I copied the, the proper link here. It was uh, published, I think, one or two years ago in the USA. They made a survey at shelters. They asked the workers of the shelters uh, to, 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 to say which dogs at the shelter are, are purebred dogs, and if they are purebred dogs, which breed they belong to. And, and for the biggest surprise, after they made a genetic test, the biggest surprise, uh, uh, most of the dogs, they, they thought they would be purebred dogs, were really crossbred dogs because there was something else in the genome. Uh, so that's why it is, it is problematic. Uh, so uh, puppy farming and backyard breeding in many countries are considered as the problem for animal welfare organizations. They should handle those problems. And, but it is not. The reputation of the breeders and purebred dogs and pedigree, pedigree dogs are destroyed by these lookalike dogs coming from puppy farms, coming from uh, pet shops, coming from backyard breeding or whoever. And another one is, is uh, uh, a very big threat for the breeders themselves are the ones who were mentioned as bad seeds, those breeders who under kennel names doing something which is not really connected to, to breeding at all. Uh, they have the paper, they have everything, but they uh, destroy the reputation of, of breeders as well. And uh, we mentioned statistics before, and this was, it's not updated, I used it uh, before, these numbers are based on the FCI statistics. Uh, just some figures. Uh, it shows the country how many puppies registered that year, total number of dogs in the country, and the percentage. So it doesn't represent the overall population uh, 
I mean, the, the pedigree dogs within the overall population, it is just the registration, but for, for statistics and to, to compare things, you need a base to compare something to the other one. So it doesn't mean that, that in Finland it is only 5.82%. Uh, it means that that year, that many of the whole population was registered. Uh, I'm sure Montenegro has more dogs. I don't know if someone is here from there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so you will see numbers, and this one is, is the important one, the smallest ratio. If you see, for example, Luxembourg or Hungary, in Hungary we have minimum 2 million dogs in the country with a population less than 10 million people. And uh, uh, that is the number of dogs which were registered under the FCI. I have no idea how many other dogs were registered by other organizations we each has the right, but you can see it is a very, very small number. And if you put together those countries uh, which sent uh, data for that year for the FCI, you can see it is a very small number. So if you, if you want to, to solve, solve problems uh, related to purebred dogs, you can, you can put legislation on breeders, but it will not solve anything. And there's a really quick bonus topic. Uh, another uh, acquisition against breeders that why they are breeding dogs, thank you, why they are breeding dogs uh, when shelters are full of mutts. First of all, uh, uh, it is on the, on the short run it can be a solution but on the long run never. Uh, for if you want to solve something and, and uh, run a propaganda you need to have an enemy. Have you ever seen any uh, propaganda campaign saying that people out in the world, you are irresponsible and you are uh, causing all those problems or the dogs because you don't know how to keep a dog, how to raise a dog, how to feed a dog, how to go to the vet, etc. Et Have you seen such a campaign ever? Because, because these are the, the acts which leads to all those animal welfare problems, but you can't hear that. I, I can't really see I know, the, know the, uh, the reason, because you can't attack those people who you are asking for donation in a campaign if you are an animal welfare organization. But these problems uh, are coming from the society. I don't say that breeders have no dirty laundry, as I told you before, but general people are causing these problems. And conclusion, uh, I put some idea here, just, just summing up everything I want, uh, read them, because, because you can read and I'm running out of my time. Uh, this topic is huge, the one we are talking about here, and, and uh, we previously discussed it many, many things. I had uh, an article series with the name uh, Restoring the Reputation of Pure Red Dogs. The first some parts were published in the USA by the Canine Chronicle, after a while, uh, we stopped it. it. It is a fragile topic, so I can understand them. But I have a blog running, and, and if you are interested in depth in this topic, uh, you can find it on my, my English blog. And thank you for your attention.